please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. And I've been listening to a bit of Big Finish Blake 7, and I like what I've been listening to. It's been uh, uh, a pretty good year for Big Finish Blake 7. Last year, I think, it was a bit ropey. This year, they really pulled it together. Well, listen, they had to work out what to do when essentially everybody who you needed to make Blake 7 was dead. You know, like, once Paul Darrow goes and, uh, you know, but, you know, everybody. <laughs> you only left with a few left. What are you going to do? You can't re you can't recast Paul Darrow, right? And d that's really the bottom line. You can't recast Paul Darrow. You probably could have recast Gareth Thomas, but boy, did he sound like a different being. <laughs> All those Blake 7 audios he did, they're like 100 years older. That never really, really worked. But Paul Darrow sounded like Paul Darrow right right up until the end. Uh, uh, and he was fantastic. And so they were, they were uh, at a bit of a loss. They didn't know what to do. So they started doing the Worlds of Blake 7, which uh, uh, started out reasonably weak. Uh, I got all of them, okay? I may be whining about them, but there's, uh, I did get all of them. They started out reasonably weak, and they got better. And this is the third... I guess third production block of them, and this one I found I, I found excellent. I, I don't know how I keep saying this. I don't know how uh, uh, sustainable this range is, right? I don't know, especially in the direction it's going. But this one is still a recommend. Yeah, uh, 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 this uh, the, the, you know this series of three box sets has been excellent. There's been after the war. Uh, what was it called again? Uh, uh, was it? I can't remember. Like the criminal, the, the the one with Dorian in it. I thought that that was quite good. Uh, uh, but I thought After the War was excellent, and this was pretty darn good as well. Uh, uh, Allies and enemies. Before we get into it, can you hit the like button, the share button, the subscribe button? All those things are fan Abby Double Dozy. Thank you very much for doing those things. Look in the video notes. You will find uh, uh, a link to my Substack, my email newsletter. It goes out every day. I was. I really should start doing it again. Uh, sending out the uh, those Blake Seven magazines. Uh, 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 comic strips that uh, why are they not reprinted really i mean i don't know why a lot like big finish why aren't you uh, why why do you get the license for all the stuff from looking right that will be awesome right and also blake seven strips that blake seven magazine that should that could basically all be collected into one volume which i would buy right would you buy all the sapphire and stills uh oh Gorgeous artwork. John M. Burns did that. Yeah, big finish. That's what you need to be doing, right? So anyway, I digress. I put all that stuff in my uh, 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 sub stack as well. If it's out of print, right? If you can get it legally, I, I say, well, yeah, you should really get it legally. <laughs> that's really where I am with that. But if it's out of print, ah, I put it in. So that's right there. It's free. I, 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 look, if you're a Jew, like this is, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit Jewy, right? This, I'm a rabbi. If you're a Jew, we are confused at, 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 at anybody when, when we say it's free and you're like, okay, I'll do that, right? That I know it's a stereotype. I understand, but it's so true. Okay, and so also we're not the best tippers. Okay, so I if if anybody has ever worked in a, as a waiter, right, in a in some kind of Jewish event and you got a bad tip, I apologize. Right, I I do apologize. Apologize, you got to know your people, baby. Anyway, I digress. Like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm very, very grateful. Uh, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, all in the video. You can follow me on everything, right? You can have me as your constant companion in your life. Uh, uh, I, I'm sure that's going to just make it so much better, right? I'm sure it will. Fine. Let's start looking at this review, at this uh, uh, release. So the general problem with this, and it is... Uh, it's way too female centric, right? And this is the first time I'm really saying it. I, I this was good, it was solid, but like, can we get a bit of Tarrant and Villa, please? It's always Jenna and Callie. Like, it's always Jenna and Callie with some other female protagonist. Now, I understand. I understand that 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 you know the seventies and eighties. They, 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 it would be hard to argue there wasn't sexism rife in the entertainment industry. It would be hard to argue that. But Blake 7, I feel, was a reasonably anti-sexist uh, uh, series. You had a really nice balance of male and female characters, right? And they kept that balance pretty much all the way through. And you, I understand. Look, what, Jenna ended up operating the teleport, right? And they, they she wasn't the, the space pirate she was sold, and that's why she left. I get it. I don't, They were treated badly when they got there, right? And, and But it's 50 years later, and we're still saying sorry by making all the stories revolve around. And it's not that she's a boring character. She is an interesting character, but, like, Everything always revolves around. Oh, it's not her. It's Avalon. It's it's always something, right? It's always, can we just get the the sexual politics back to something that reflects 
the society in which we live in rather than this fantasy society where women uh, uh, don't act like women, right? Women don't have the, the, the normative... The, what the scientific data overwhelmingly says is the normative, the normative uh, uh, drives of women, right? I think it's because you want to say that men and women are, are interchangeable, which I just don't think they are. I think men and women are both unique. And I understand for some people, they're fluid, right? Okay, I just don't think that's that's like, you know, the uh, 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 normative state. You know, that, that for, for, a, for a human being. I just don't think that that's the case. Not maligning anybody if they do feel that. But yeah, that's really the, this gender identity stuff that's really running through it. It's really coming, becoming very, very noticeable. And otherwise, this has been a very, very good series. So I really hope the next one focus a bit more on uh, Taron and, and Villa. Uh, 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 you know, they're both around, right? Why not use them a little bit? Uh, what uh, what saves this box set, of course? Uh, uh, I mean, it's all good. I mean, it's nothing. Nothing needs to be saved for. Uh, uh, you know, nothing needs to be saved with it. But uh, uh, the main, the, who is it? The main character uh the the woman who ends up uh, uh, uh betraying blake at the end in the final episode filling her in uh, interesting character but i think what re re uh, really sells this box set for me is the two tarrants again uh two travises again not tarrants <laughs> no not a tarrant to be seen baby the the two travises because they are excellent excellent performances sadly this will be the spot I, I assume the final stephen grief uh, uh appearance of travis so they're they're, they're a bit confused right now because this stephen grief Travis was a post uh, uh, Star One Travis, so that's another little gripe I have with these World of Blake Seven re uh, releases. That I watched all of Blake Seven, I bought all of Blake Blake Seven, I bought it again. I got the blue, I got the DVDs. Right, if you bl bring it out on Blu-ray and clean them up and put new effects on them, I am absolutely buying them again. Right, I've seen them many, many times. I I'm not like a super. The Lake Seven Maven that I can remember the timeline of everywhere. What are they doing there? Who's this? What's going on there? Then and it's it's a bit confusing trying to work out where everything falls into the timeline. I think they kind of need some kind of infographic for each one of these releases to say show you where the where the hell you are, what's going on, uh, uh, especially as they're developing. Uh, uh, outside of uh, what we've seen in Blake Seven, we certainly we 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 got a a post Blake Seven life for for Jenna, uh, and which actually you know I know I just bitched about about everything's always female, but I would really like to see her play her her actual age. Like, what's Jenna like when she gets older, right? Uh, uh, and I think that actually might be a uh, a backdoor to a new series that will be somewhat more sustainable. You can get another clone clone of Travis. I mean, I I, I mean, I guess what they're going to have to do if they want to continue this this Travis clone, which was they they did in the second production block of the the these uh, stories right the uh, i guess they could change him into the brian croucher travis in the same way they changed him into brian croucher travis first so brian croucher by the way fantastic in these box sets right the last one uh, uh he was so good in it, it, it i love that story right where you told explain why he was betraying the entirety of humanity and to whom, right? I thought that was excellent. But Brian Croucher just gives a fantastic performance in all of these. Maybe it's just because he's a bloke, right? You know, I'm getting, oh, a bit of masculine energy. That might be good. It might be that. I don't know. I do not know. But uh, 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 for me, he's a standout in this. And if he's going to be the new Travis moving forward, I'm fine with that. If this is the end of the Blake Seven range, I'm also fine with that. I mean, but honestly, I would like to see something set in the future right i would like to see everything moved on somewhat and i don't know find another liberator i mean really i, I know they can say oh we don't want you to repeat what you've done before really that's the entirety of big finish and repeating what you've done before right like like i i i i, I don't go and buy your third doctor's uh you know uh, stories because i'm like oh i've never heard john pertry before no because i want to relive a bit of that and yet it be new right i've got all the videos yeah i've got the blu-ray so uh, uh, now I want more stories i just like it right yes yes we want a bit more of what, what went before but again this has been a very, I think this production block of three box sets has been uh, 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 excellent. So let's look at the stories, right? Um, uh, where are we up to? Uh, from the start of the rebellion to the br its brutal conclusion, Arlen has hunted Rog Blake. Yeah, so it's all about Arlen who appeared in, uh, in Blake. I assume it's the same actress. I haven't even bothered look up, looking up, but I assume it is, right? 
Um, Kelly fights uh, uh, beside her. Jenna Stannis works for her. Space Commander Travis is a mentor as she plays each side against the other. Uh, how will Arlen decide who are the allies and who are the enemies? So the, really, the strong thing about this is uh, uh, what they didn't do with the Avalon box sets. So they made this into a really interesting character, right? They took this... The, the, the two-dimensional thing that you saw in Blake, right? You didn't see much of that character. And they gave her a lot of, a lot of layers and, and just developed this uh, uh, very interesting character that I found compelling and I was happy to listen to for, for, for three, three stories. Uh, so the first story is... Uh, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, sorry, I'm major by Elizabeth Miles. I'm always nervous when I see Elizabeth Miles because oftentimes I find her work a bit of a slog, right? A bit of a slog to get through. This one kind of feels the same as well, right? It works with a slog. Sorry, Major. Sorry, Major is a key Federation communi uh, communications hub. Federation officer Arlen undertakes an undercover mission to destroy uh, uh, rebel factions that threaten it. So this was good. So this is again earlier, earlier on in the timeline of Blake Seven. I wish I had that. I wish I had more of an encyclopedic knowledge of it, so I could go know more what's going on. But it's set earlier on in the timeline, and, and I like seeing how different planets are rebelling in different ways. Uh, uh, and you know that's basically what this is. So Arlen is uh, brought in to uh, uh, infiltrate this uh, rebel group and eventually destroy them and, and it's you you see you know the the coldness of the you know of the character uh, as she betrays everyone uh, yeah but also I think you 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 get to see the the conflicting agendas going on within her which again I find excellent right that I think that's a real mark of good writing. Uh, and good race. So I know I sort of started slacking off Liz Miles, Miles but I, uh, you, you, you did okay there. The last person you expect to find is an R and outcast, uh, R and outcast amongst the humans. Will the mysterious Callie disrupt her plan? So again, I think there's a pre liberator. I think <laughs> a pre liberator. Um, it's again, it's fun seeing her infiltrate the rebel group and, and knowing she's going to betray people that that she likes right uh but it's uh uh it ends i don't want to spoil it for you because i wouldn't i would like you to buy this because i'd like them to do more frankly uh uh but i uh i liked her interaction with with callie and it ends up setting things up for a uh, uh, uh quite a strong second episode no names right so no name um now it's uh, uh time time has moved on and arlen has left the federation uh, she was injured and she's got this uh deve she's developing this kind of like hatred of blake right this obsession and hatred of blake so no name is a is a um is a really kind of fun uh, Western esque story, right? It uh, it feels like it's like a one you know one horse town, and, and I kind of you know remember what was that one uh, gambit, right? You you saw uh, Travis walking in out you know through the uh, uh, where, wherever it was uh, outside the dome, like whoosh, that that sort of thing. I, I imagine that's a, you know that that thing go, going on here. So everyone on uh, Van Stone is hiding is hiding something. That's why they're there hiding from their own past. Arden wonders what brought Rosh Blake to this remote outpost. Well, as you know, Gareth Thomas is brown bread. You know, it's not, it's not uh, uh, Rosh Blake. Has Arlen, uh, has Arlen uncovered a secret, uh, a buried secret? And what does Space Commander Travis want on uh, Vanstone? So, uh, again, I found this a really strong story. Like very, lots of very, very good Western vibes. They're in this uh, one horse town. You've got these local outlaws. Uh, uh, Arlen is a courier there. She's got a, a quiet life going on and she's enjoying her quiet life under the radar. And then this guy turns up who is clearly uh, clearly Travis, the Brian Crouch, uh, Brian Crouch Travis, and he says he's Blake, right? And, and so there's an interesting plan going on. And, and you had this a lot in the last box set as well, which I like a lot with, with Brian Croucher. You got to see, you know, uh, Travis's cunning, which you didn't really get to see a lot on TV. <laughs> Brian Croucher's Travis! I always remember him going, run away! A lot, you know? And like his Travis was, uh, didn't seem that Machiavellian. Well, he does here. Right, and I I like his agenda. Right, I think I really genuinely think it works. Um, and it's it's a uh, a great a great little story, and it it uh, uh, again changes the course of Arlen's life again, setting her up 
in you know to put her to uh, uh, in the direction of that last episode, Blake, which really happens by Jonathan Morris. Now Jonathan Morris in the making of said I'd never seen all of Blake's Seven in order until recently, and I bought the the DVDs and watched the entirety of it. So that's what I kind of need to understand what's going on. So he really understands what's going on with this. So Jenna Stannis knows that smuggling guns will help feel, uh, free Salter Minor. This story is called Sedition. Uh, from the Federation, and she suspects that the uh, only reason why Arlen wants her help, uh, but she suspects that's not the only reason that Arlen wants her help, but Jenna doesn't know who else is on the planet. How can Travis have survived Star 1? So this, again, post-liberated uh, 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 Jenna, working as a a uh, smuggler, a pirate, a gun runner with with a heart of gold. I mean, you know, yeah, essentially, uh, and she ends up uh, uh, becoming involved in in Arla's machinations, uh, which ends up becoming involved with the uh, with the Stephen Grief Cra uh, Travis again. Sadly, the last time we hear it. So this Stephen Grief Travis was from a, a box set called The Clone Masters, which I would say was the only one I would recommend from the second production block of this world of Blake Sevens, uh, uh, which I really, really like that one, actually. Um, and and so he's he's a different uh, creation. He's, di he's not the same Travis. Uh, and he's trying to... Uh, uh, um, survive on the reputation of one and now he's a psycho strategist um I, I liked it you know i liked it but in the end they you know at the final scene uh, maybe the post credit scene i can't remember it was very very towards the end that oh yeah maybe now maybe you want to go to that planet that blake's on right then she gets tipped off and they she heads off over there um i don't really need to know more about arlen quite frankly i i uh, this really fleshed out fleshed out her character for me um look sunny uh uh was it kinvet is the standout of these the, the these box sets other than uh brian character but i think that's because they use her so heavily again i would love to see a her playing her her you know her age now maybe another liberator gets found and she's she ends up in charge of it with you can use another uh, well, another clone or whatever. I don't really care, right? Right, but I think I think that would be maybe you know, and uh, was a, a, a was a, an old villa and an old uh, old Jenna with some new people. That might be a way to go. Try that out. Try that out. My only again, my request is this: if you're doing more of these box sets, can we just not all be so female set? Hey, let's have a look at them for a second. We'll, we'll, we'll run through all of uh, 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 see, see if they come up. Here we go. So, uh, Anna, uh, Allies and M is a female centric as was after the war uh, with a standout from Bri uh, Brian Croucher. Uh, another Jenna and Callie one. Here is a villain. That though I did like the, the, this box set a lot. Right, I thought 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 that was good. Uh, Clone Masters again. That was the best one of of the uh, second block of three. Uh, uh, again, Callie and very Callie and Jenna with the two Travises uh, uh, beefing up. We get a, a cameo from uh, 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 in Babe in the Butcher, but this was not a recommend at all. It's all about a new female character who dominated all the way through it. Uh, uh, Avalon, a very boring female character, right? A very, very dull female character. Uh, and Terra Nostra, I, I, honestly, uh, yes, there was another all-new female character that was uh, dominating all the way through it, which is, again, it's not like, a, oh, no, women, no, nah. no, just, it, can it... Can we get the balance back that we used to have in Blake 7, which was quite good because we all like that, right? Which is why we bought it, right? Which is why we bought it. Uh, uh, but anyway, that being said, this is still a recommend on the quality of the writing. It, it, it really captures the universe of Blake 7 as the... Oh, I would say most of these worlds of Blake 7 really do. Uh, um, it really feels very, very organically in there. I hope they do more, right? I do hope they do more. But, you know, you know, maybe a bit of a sausage fish ne the next time. That would be good. You know, a little bit, a little, uh, a little bit more blokes, just a little bit. That'll be lovely. My name is Sheila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!